Utilizing packaging and mixed media art is not anything new, but how one creative to another utilizes it can be vastly different. I am going to share with you how I'm following along with what I call my coffee cup prompts. And with packaging, I'm going to make this journal. I'm Peg with Two Old Crows Mixed Media, so let's get started. I began with this package that shampoo and conditioner came nestled inside. I started with the white gesso, as you saw me doing at the very beginning, added a little black. It was still a little wet. Got it kind of muddled together for a gray and hit it with this bubble wrap. Once that is dry, I'm going to begin working this to create this journal cover. I wanted some texture. And I have these new video, new videos, new stencils that I received. I ordered a bunch from Timu, and they're pretty nice stencils, very inexpensive. So I've put this stencil down, pulling some of my texture paste through it. I make my own texture paste. I'll link that video up above if you want to use my recipe. There's a couple of things you can make it with. Cornstarch is one, and baby powder is another. I am just going to cover this with some texture. I'm not really <clears throat> paying too close of attention to what the design is. Well, I do think this design of flowers is lovely, <clears throat> and we are getting into spring. So it, you know, is kind of reminiscent of that, and I, it, it impacts the color that I choose in, in a moment. So let's get this texture paste down, and we'll allow that to completely dry. Now, once dry, I have some fine sandpaper that I will be just running over the top of this texture. And I do that for a couple of reasons. I do it, one, to knock down all of the edges off of it. And the second reason, I want just that lightly smooth texture in the background where you think there might be some texture, but you're not <laughs> exactly sure. So I'm looking for that very subtle texture on this cover. Now once I have that all sanded down and all of the um, dust from that texture paste brushed off, I have pulled in some yellow ochre and I am just going to spread that throughout this texture on with this card, uh, it's an old hotel key card. And I have an abundance of those because I travel quite a bit with my job. So wherever they put me up, I, I I keep the card. And once I have this coated, I'm going to allow that to dry fully. I might push it forward a little bit with my old hair dryer, but we'll see. Once dry, I will once again sand over it and scruff up some of that yellow ochre. I'm just wanting this for, for a background. Now that I have the first layer of color down, I'm going to go ahead and trim it. And I've decided to use my Fiskars cutting tool to make sure that I have a nice clean edge. And this is thin enough and small enough to fit within the confines of what I have. And now that that is all trimmed down, into the size of the book. I have my front cover, my back cover, and my spine cut out of that piece of shampoo packaging. I want to add a little more springy depth. I have this yellow tissue paper, once again, packaging that came in a gift that was uh, delivered to, to me. So I have the tissue paper that I saved out of that gift bag. So it's just your basic gift packaging tissue paper. And I shall put that on top. And I tore a little hole there, so it's going to be very easy for me to tuck that in and secure that on the back. I think you can see, there you go. <laughs> you can see that little hole and I'm just going to fold these over and make my little oval have a nice, clean, 
finish there on the inside. I'll hit that with a little extra glue. That video that I linked for you previously for the texture paste also has the recipe for the glue and water mixture or the ratios for the homemade Mod Podge, if you will. So now to spring it up quite a bit, I'm going to utilize this lime green color. And if you follow me, you know that these bright colors are, are really not within the realm that I use very often, but I am trying to brighten up some of my projects and get some additional color into them. I, I lean towards the grungy. And, you know, we kind of started out grungy, but we're going to brighten it up a little bit. Now to trim off the excess tissue paper. And that lime green picked up the depth of the tissue paper, the wrinkles in the tissue paper. It picked up the depth of that texture that was laid down underneath. You can see some of that yellow ochre peeking through. That black, grayish color kind of darkened it up a little bit. So this has some, some really nice depth in the layers. And we'll just continue to work this tissue paper and get it securely onto each piece. And now, once finalized, we have our covers pretty much ready to roll. So there's the front cover with the oval, the back cover. I want to ink around everything with this um, vintage photo, Distress Oxide. And I've also just taken that sponge and lightly put that distressed oxide on the outside covers just to pull that texture out a little bit more. So I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking. And now I have some old scrap paper. I have a bunch of scrapbooking paper that I've never really utilized. And I thought this wouldn't be a bad time to get some out and utilize it for my inside front cover and my inside back. So I've just trimmed it down to the appropriate size, rounded off the corners, inked around it, and now shall put it into place. And I think that makes a nice, a nice little inside piece. So for the paper, I'm using just plain old white typing paper. I have um, wet each piece. So when I spray on the Distress Oxide, it doesn't just glop on, it flows very freely. So once I spray it and just dap it with my Vintage Photo ink pad, I like the way that that puts down the little squares of ink that look intentional. And I will dry it with my hair dryer to get the paper nice and dry. Now there's two things that you could do with this after it's dry. You could press it with a dry steam iron to make sure that every piece is just perfectly pressed and no wrinkles. But I'm not going to do that. I am going to allow it to be kind of rustic-y, if you will. So I'm spraying with scattered straw and then hitting it with that vintage photo ink pad. Just a very simple and easy way to add some depth of color into my signatures. And I'm also going to come back and use a mowed lawn as well. So I have two, well we'll go over that in a bit. Now we need to decide what we're going to have peek through that front cover. And I have been echo dyeing because these little blue violets are coming up free range in my yard. And I like to utilize them because they produce such great color. I don't necessarily want the blue in this project. And I have dropped some onion skins on this watercolor paper when I echo dyed it as well. And I think I'm going to wind up utilizing just a a piece that was dyed with um, onion skins and wild garlic strands. 
And now I have focused on the one I want to use. And now just to determine which portion of this I want peeking through, but I don't want to waste the whole thing because this would make a nice little tag somewhere or a nice covered paper clip or something. So we'll set that off to the side and we will glue this piece of echo dyed watercolor paper onto the back of this cover. It's going to give it a little more strength. Plus, it's going to give us something interesting to peek through that oval hole. Now, I recently made a trip to Dollar Tree, and they had a bunch of this tape in a bucket for, I don't know, 50 cents a dollar. This is just waterproof medical tape. And I am going to tape this Echo Dye piece of paper into place and then come back with my glitter glue and just secure it around that oval so I don't have any uh, loose edges there on the front cover. Here are the three signatures. I did two with the yellow Distress Oxide and one with the green. So I'm going to sandwich the green with the two yellow. And I think that's going to make a nice, nice little journal. Now I went to get this book into place. So I have my covers, front and back, decorated. My spine laid into place. This black cloth binding tape that I love to use. I will position it so it is secure on my spine. And then I'm going to lift that front cover back off and just make sure that that is straight and even on the front and that that spine is straight and even on that tape. So there we have a nice clean line down the front. And we'll position the back cover now. And this cloth binding tape I love. If you want to check that out, you can find it by going to my website, toolcrossmixmedia.com, and then entering into my Amazon shop, where I make a little commission off of everything you buy, but it does not alter the price that you pay from Amazon. So this is where you can find that in my book binding section, and you'll see the tapes and the threads and the needles and everything that I use. So now I have the binding tape into place. <clears throat> of course, I've used black. So I think to bring that black binding tape into play, I'll go around the outside edge with some black ink. And then we have a little black kind of represented throughout the edges of this book or of this journal cover. Now to bind the journal into place. I'm measuring the center and one inch from each end. Now poke my holes through that pencil mark with my craft pick. And then I will position that where I want it on the spine and mark my holes with a little indent with my craft pick on the center of that spine so I know where to poke through the spine. So now I have the little indents. I'll just make those holes in the spine. Just make sure I have that lined up correctly. And getting the first one into place makes the second and third much easier. Because you know right where those holes should go. So now to bind this in, I'm pulling that wax thread three times the height of my signature because that gives me plenty. I will thread this through just an upholstery needle. We'll go through that center hole first and through the spine center hole. I'm going to hang on and secure the end of that with my fingers on the inside so I don't pull it all the way through. And then I'll come through the top or the bottom 
And once I have that through to the inside, I'll go all the way back up to the other end. And pull that through. Now I'm checking to make sure that we don't have any thread loose or tangled on the inside. And then I will go back through to that inside hole, making sure that I have a thread on either side of that long piece. And then I will secure that by tying a square knot over the top of that interior thread. And there is just your simple pamphlet binding. Now I'm going to go up from that center hole and poke through the binding up from the bottom hole, the same width, and poke through once again. And we'll just get the holes poke for our second signature. And I will get that sewn into place. Marking it on the outside of my signature to make sure when I mark it on the inside, we're lining up. And now I'll poke those holes through. And we'll thread the needle up once again, and we'll do the sec second signature, and then we will sew the third one in, and we will have a completed book. So let's just sew one more. And then we'll go through a little photo montage of our finished piece. S securing it with my finger, going through that bottom hole to the inside. Now I'll go all the way up to the top. And then we'll come back through that center hole. Whoops, I came in threaded. Let me thread this needle back up and we'll go back through that center hole tie and tie this off. This would probably be a good time for me to ask you to hit that like button. It does help my channel and of course I would love to have you subscribe. And there we go. So we have two of the signatures into place. I'll throw the third one in off camera. And here you have a picture of the finished piece. I'll take this opportunity to thank you for following along with my videos and my coffee cup prompts, which we are in our fourth month. This month is packaging. This is a packaging journal that I have completed with that shampoo and conditioner package. And we will continue on with one more packaging video. Please come over to my Facebook group and share your work or what you're doing with packaging. I shall say bye for now. The Coffee Cup Prompts playlist is right here.